Fantastic Nation and all my lovely friends. Well, I'm so glad you could join me. Now, before we begin this episode, I just want to let you know that my membership site, The Artastic Collective, is currently open for enrollment. Now, the enrollment period is time sensitive. You see, it's only going to be open for another couple weeks, and then you won't have an opportunity to join in on this fabulous deal until the next time it launches. That is a long way away for getting your hands on a sweet art teaching resource deal. To better support our teachers, I created the Artastic Collective. With the Artastic Collective Art Resource Library membership for art teachers, my mission is to provide you with prepared art lessons, resources, and activities that will allow you to free up your time and live your life, whether that means traveling, pursuing your hobbies, or spending time with your family. It will provide you with fully planned art lessons and resources that cover standards and include assessments and rubrics, and these will be given to you monthly. You should be able to be an instructor or a teacher and be able to have the time to live life. With this membership, you will receive teaching ideas, inspiration, and guidance to help you navigate and problem solve in your classroom or studio. This membership will give you the freedom to create art with kids, live your life, and will help you engage your students with art lessons. This membership is intended for elementary and middle school teachers. Find my membership at artasticcollective.com or you can simply search it in Google or your favorite web browser. Remember, the membership is only open for enrollment for a couple weeks and then it will close until the next time it launches. So make sure you visit the site right now and join this opportunity for getting your hands on hundreds of misertastic art resources before this opportunity is gone. You're listening to the Miss Artastic Podcast. Inspiration for art teachers. Here's your host, Kathleen McGivern. In today's podcast, we're going to talk about inspiring your reluctant artists or art makers. Encouraging students to make art can sometimes happen easily and other times it's a challenge. You bring out, act out, or show your hook, and bam, they're engaged and are wanting to, wanting to do their best. Depending on the age or the student's own personal experience with creating art, this is sometimes a challenge, and you might even get a complete refusal. As a teacher, it is our job to encourage a student to create. After many years of experience teaching and having taught art to students from kindergarten to grade 12, I have a few tricks up my sleeve in terms of getting all your students to create art, even if they really don't want to. Before we dive in on looking at different approaches, it is important to know that building a relationship and earning your students' trust is key for success, not only for the art project you are working on, but to create an environment where the student always feels safe when making art. A lot of the time, the barriers for not wanting to create are self-judgment and fear of peer judgment, fear of failure, and lack of exposure to creating art. Remember that creating art can make us feel vulnerable, so it can make a lot of people feel vulnerable. Creative thinking and using new mediums or materials can make people, including students, feel very uncomfortable. All of these prevent individuals from wanting to do their best. Because of course we know that there are even adults who say I can't make art or might not want to engage in the drawing process or even try because of these feelings that it can sometimes bring up. A lot of time kids act out or are reluctant to try because they fear what their peers might think. Isn't this true for us as well? Let's take a look at some strategies you can try out in your classroom. Make sure you stick to one for a while to ensure that the new habit or pattern makes a difference. 
one day is not a sufficient trial and error period. It's never going to be a success if you, for one day, try it, it doesn't work, you give up, you say it's over. Um, or even if you have a success the very first day, the next day it might not be so so much, right? So you have to give it time to become a habit. Even for ourselves, it takes a while to create new habits or patterns, right? That make differences. Teach growth mindset. So the very first one I want you to take a look at is teaching growth mindset. Teach growth mindset to overcome fear of failure and encourage a mistake-driven classroom. Growth mindset is essential in creating an environment where students are not afraid to make mistakes or fail. Teaching growth mindset in your art classroom is essential. If you want students to believe that they can grow, teaching growth mindset thinking to your students in your classroom can teach them to change the way they think, to allow them to believe they can create art if they practice and try, to know that mistakes help them learn and that learning takes time and determination and that we are not expected to create the best art piece from the start. Instead, knowing that, like anything, learning the creative process is a journey and an adventure where you create, experiment, and make mistakes and encounter failures. Even professional artists create, experiment, make mistakes, and encounter failures. And honestly, like, I, I show my ceramic artwork, and anybody who's worked with clay knows that it is a material that sometimes has a mind of its own. So you can create, you can ex experiment, but you're, you're mo very well going to make mistakes. And you are going to encounter many failures. You might have glaze run and get stuck on shelves. You might have work crack. I have even had, there was one time I had a show and I have never had any, my, any of my work get destroyed in a show. I have been to shows and had openings where it was like parties and people were um, using other things so they were not even aware of their surroundings, but they didn't knock anything over. And then I had a show at a ceramic gallery of all places. A gallery just for ceramics, so everything is fragile. Well, the work was hung and it, f I don't know what happened. Somebody on the opposing wall banged the wall so hard it popped my sculpture off the wall and of course it smashed. And then I brought them a replacement piece after being very devastated uh, because my th work that I had spent at least three or four months making was in a billion pieces. So when I was picking up my, my broken piece, I also was dropping off another. And then the very next day, they called me to tell me that um, uh, somebody had actually knocked my sculpture off the plinth. Another artist. I was like, very, I was very um, distraught because it was a work that was very deep for me and very meaningful, both of them were. Um, so I just, I was, it put me into a dark spiral for, on the creative process part of things, the dark, a dark creative process. It made it, it put it blank. Anyway, so the point is, is that, I know I went off on a little tangent here, but the point is, is that even with professional artists, things happen, <laughs> but, um, it's okay to go through this journey. Listen, we are all lifelong learners. I know that I'm probably going to be very reluctant in hanging my ceramics on the wall, but if I do, it's going to be in a very different way. Uh, <laughs> and also, um, yeah, it just taught me a lot about placement of art too. So we're all lifelong learners, and no matter at what point in your work, in your stage of creating you are, you're hopefully... We're always going to grow. That is the key. So you can teach growth mindset through YouTube, PowerPoints, or worksheets and discussions. And you can even teach students growth mindset through making art. Another idea is to have a calming space for students who are easily frustrated. Sometimes we have students in our classroom who show their frustration in unexpected ways. We know what that looks like. It could be breaking pencils, shredding paper, or even 
upturned chairs. I have seen it all, to be honest. Um, if not beyond all. Have a safe and calming space in your classroom where the students can go for five minutes. So use a timer to calm down. So if you know, notice somebody is a little bit triggered, be proactive <laughs> is my suggestion. And you can even teach this. If you know a student's coming in and there's somebody who's easily triggered, you can totally be proactive by teaching this space, a calming space at the very beginning so that they know they can have it. And when you see them showing some signs that they're triggered, you can invite them over and maybe that will help them make a change, right? They can turn it into a positive habit instead of, you know, showing they're upset in a classroom. And then the embarrassment they might feel afterwards as well, right? Which might continue to trigger it. So, um, this provides them opportunities, right? So give them that opportunity to calm down before they've already turned into the red beast. This way they know you're going to be there to support them and that they can take a short break to get back to work in the ready to learn mindset before they can continue working and try again, right? So, I mean, five minutes in a calm space is a lot better than 10 or 15 minutes or their entire learning day completely jeopardized jeopardize it depends on the kid right so otherwise they might just completely shut down and refuse work at all so there are very different levels of this some people just shut down some people show behavior everybody's very different and there's no one student model that we can look at but just think about how you can help those people and those kids those humans um, knowing that they might need this option and I think you could do it is encourage a safe space sorry, a safe classroom where everyone understands that we all have different levels of experience or practice in art making. You need to make it clear at the beginning of your year, term, or semester and revisit the conversation more than often that your classroom is a safe space where students are allowed to feel safe, to experiment, to learn, to make mistakes, to be themselves, and even failure. Because if you've taught growth mindset, the kids already know that failing, failing is an opportunity for growth and learning. Celebrate mistakes and point out when you've made a boo-boo. I often will stop. I, I make mistakes often. I will stop and I'll be like, guys, I made a mistake. And I'll explain the mistake I made and then I'll show them the correction. I even do this when I'm reading. I'll say, oh. I made a mistake, I'm gonna go back and reread this part again. And that way I'm always modeling that. I'm correcting myself and I'm making it better. So laugh and make it something. Celebrate it. Everyone makes mistakes, even teachers. And I'm pretty sure Ms. Frizzle points this out all the time on Magic School Bus. So keep it safe. It all starts with you as the leader. Next, all art should be unique. So. Explain your expectations. You are here to help students do their best, not have them compare themselves to others or artists from our history. We are not here to compare our works in elementary school to the quality of work that Henri Matisse or Frida Kahlo produced. Okay, uh, that is not the expectation. <laughs> you just want them to try and experiment and learn some new and develop their skills, right? You should state this at the start of your class or term, year, semester, whatever, but also reinforce it through the year. You need to be consistent and you need to encourage them always. Remind them that they are doing their personal best. Art should be unique. If you wanted all the art to be the exact same as your example, then you should have instead ordered a photocopier in instead of kids. Encourage them to do their best, which is your expectation of everyone, and encourage them to add their own artist flavor. That's what I like to call it. My own style, your style, I call it an artist flavor. It's our own style of making and everything that we imagine in our own heads is very unique from anybody else's. And that is what we should celebrate. And that is what makes us, each of us, diverse. Um, and that is our artist flavor. And we need to make that apparent, not eliminate it. That is what kills creativity. 
that's what what happens when kids go to grade five they start comparing each other to themselves to each other and then all that creativity is just smushed by society please do not encourage the smushing of artist flavor and instead let it flourish and blossom into something wonderful and magical next build confidence start with projects where students will be successful to build confidence if you start off with projects that not everyone can achieve then you will have students immediately losing confidence in their abilities start with a mini art challenge where the focus is on the experimentation and creative process instead of the end product focus on building skills with directed drawings for the first project or as a when you're done Make them play-based and fun. Pick projects that you know everyone will achieve, be able to achieve. And if you need directed drawings or some little task cards, you can of course find my directed drawings and I have them for all the holidays and seasons in my TPT store, which is Teachers Pay Teachers. Just search Ms. Artastic and you can find them there in the directed drawings category, which you can find on the left side of your screen. Next, work with student interests. Start with projects that are on topics of current student interests. If kids are interested in llamas, unicorns, or, sh or sharks, for example, and that is the current trend, it might not be your interest, it might not be my interest, but if that's, my interest is not, is, is not what's important to kids. <laughs> It's the, their current interests that is what should be driving your focus and intent. So why not create art projects during the start of your year term or semester that will hook their interests, make that connection with themselves, and draw them into your class. This is an easy way to earn their trust and build confidence. Allow student choice. So the next idea is to allow student choice and allow them to add their artist flavor. While teaching, it will be essential to allow them to show themselves in their work. They should be able to relate to the work, to see themselves in it, and have it be meaningful to their style and interests. Let your kids change something and do it in their style when making art. For example, if you're leading a directed draw art project and you draw a dog's face in a very specific style, but a student like likes Great Danes instead of Golden Retrievers, you could totally let them change a couple features to make it more of a Great Dane instead of a Golden Retriever. Of course, they can copy the parts of what you're doing and they will still be following the directions um, and still be learning the other art making techniques that you show like pencil crayon or oil pastel, but, or it could be, but they're still learning, right? So. They could also just pick smaller details like eyes. So I do a lot of cartoon eyes, but if a kid wants to draw like kawaii eyes or like realistic eyes, they should be allowed to do it. We're not robots and how boring would it be if every art piece was the same? Make an effort to earn the trust of and build a relationship with your students who are resistant to art making. I highly suggest this one. So I always at the beginning of a semester or year, I look around the room and I think about who I need to make my friend in my room. There are always kids who are easy to build relationships with naturally, right? They come to you, but there's others who are very reluctant for whatever reason. And we might not ever get to know that reason. It could be something that has happened in previous years or at home. We don't know. Okay. But that's the kid or children that you need to make an effort for. You need to initiate that. So sit with them at their tables and chill with them. And this should be for everybody in general. Sit with them at their tables, chill with them. Make art beside them as they create. You can also try doing small group instruction where you pull some students who are reluctant to a table and work with them where they don't have to feel pressured by their peers and know that you have their backs. I call it my I call my rainbow table party island because having a party is way cooler than getting help from the teacher. Everyone likes to work with me at party island. They know I have their backs and that there is no judgment. I can talk to them and get to know them as they as they work. 
I earn their trust and build their uh, relationship with them much easier than if I sent them out into the wilderness to figure it out on their own. Yes, my desk or rainbow table is Party Island, so I did have to turn my filing cabinet into a locker of my old desk supplies, which is okay because I don't need a filing cabinet for files anymore because everything is digital pretty well nowadays. Um, and our report cards are also digital, so there's nothing to keep, to be honest. <laughs> it's the only thing that locks in my room. Anywho, um, that's an option, so you can find a different place to keep your stuff, or just get rid of them. Like, what are we even keeping? Like, how many pens do we need to hoard? Let's be honest. But students feel more comfortable to be themselves while I talk them up. They completely forget that they were unwilling to create art five minutes ago. They forget and just do and chill with me and their peers. And of course, do leave and float around and check on your other students, giving them some time to be independent. All the while, you're challenging students, um, you're challenging students to know that they're safe and they trust you. Next, make sure that you show your true colors and who you are. Let them know who you are as a person beyond the teacher. I'm not saying tell them every detail, but let them know some of your likes, or if you like video games or Marvel movies, then they connect. They can connect to that, right? You're giving them that opportunity to make a connection, to relate to you. So be fun. Don't feel afraid to have fun and show your true colors. Be silly. I am silly all day long in my classroom. And sometimes I unintentionally get the kids all wound up just by being silly. Uh, I have to bring it back. But be silly and have fun. Why? Kids need to know you're human. You are not a talking robot in front of a room. Just be your true self. Share your faves, show your artist flavor as you create ex your examples or do demonstrations. You can tell them about your fur babies or your kids um, and tell them to do the same work on, on their own works, right? So like, let them be. People relate to humans, not necessarily robots. Therefore, you will have a much easier time connecting with students through this approach as well. And this does not mean throw classroom management out the door. Still do that, but also have your fun edge too. Now, to be honest, I'm often not my fun and silly self on those few very precious weeks at the beginning of the year. I, 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 um, I set up this classroom first and once and then I can start letting um, my fun and silly side come out slowly, right? And then usually it's, once it's out, it is escaped into the universe. And that is that. Anywho, try out these ideas and see how they work for you. And make sure you try a strategy for a while. Trying it for one day is not enough a while. Give it some time to really soak in all that butter and salt. Okay, here is your action item. I recommend doing two to three of these strategies and see if it makes a difference. You can always add more of these strategies to your tool belt as time goes on. Don't do it all at once. That's too much. You're not even gonna stick to anything if you try to do everything at once. So pick one, add on as you go. So remember building relationships and earning a student's trust takes time. I had one student who wouldn't let me talk to him or teach him for three months. I am I am serious. Three months. I just sat there waiting for the day because it was so it was a challenge. Um, but I I knew that in order to survive, I had to figure out how to make a connection with this kid. It took three months of hard work and of him literally yelling, I'm bored in a yeah, just very yelly voice. I'm bored. I'm bored. I'm bored. On repeat while I was instructing every day before I found my way in to creating a connection with him and once I figured that out which way by the way he liked to talk about cooking and Roblox so I was like what okay so then once I had that I was in so after that I sealed the deal and earned his trust and he instead uh, wanted to engage with the lessons rather than sabotage them. 
It required me finding out that one little key that would open the door and that changed everything. He, he became one of my favorite students, to be honest. Somebody that I will always remember in my heart, even though it was a very challenging, challenging year. It, yeah. After this episode, please check out the Artastic Collective, which can be found by searching Artastic Collective on a search engine or find it at artasticcollective.com. Remember, this membership will or soon close and now is a good time to explore if it's the option for you that will eliminate all that planning time. I'm here for you and I'm ready to help you in your art teaching journey. Join me in my next episode where I will talk about how to encourage students to be creative. I'm Kathleen McGivern, Ms. Artastic, signing off.